uh, long story short, ended up uh, getting an injury. It wasn't an injury that I couldn't recover from or anything yeah. like that, but it was at the, at, at the same time, I, I had my oldest son, so it was just like, as you know, as my mom, you know, uh, puts it, you know, I mean, you know, stuff just got real. She actually didn't say that, but she says <laughs> uh, it just got real, and it just kind of all, kind of honestly, just the pieces just kind of fell. You're listening to the Barn Restaurant Podcast, where hospitality lovers come to listen and learn with expert David DiLorenzo. Now here's your host, the DiLo. What's cooking, 480 fam? We are back at you with another episode of the Bar and Restaurant Podcast, and uh, it is brought to you by Local 480. Uh, Please follow them on Instagram and by Bar and Restaurant Insurance, and I am your host, The Delo. So today's podcast, we have Chef Stephen Jones, and he is the proud owner of a local restaurant in Arizona called the Larder and the Delta. So excited to bring you this episode and uh, just sit back and, and relax and check out his story. And we are here with another episode of the Bar and Restaurant Podcast. And today I have my special guest, Stephen Jones, Chef Stephen Jones. Hello, hello, hello. How are Thank you doing, you. sir? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. So there was a couple of years ago, we shared a dinner table and I believe you had your wife with you, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what did you win? What, what was it that you won for that year? Uh, that year, I believe we won for most innovative restaurant concept. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 Very cool. And that very, very cool. I was a total surprise. I didn't know anything about it. You were surprised. Actually. I was, I was 100% surprised because I literally had just got an email inviting me to go and I was yeah. like, I didn't know I was nominated, but okay. Yeah. And uh, so we went and then, yeah, then we won and I was like, what is going on? So being on the committee for that now, I wasn't that year, but the, this last year I was, mm-hmm. I see how all that works. And so all the, this list of names, they all, you know, come through of restaurants that they want for that, that, um, uh, what you call it, that award mm-hmm. per se. And what ends up happening is that it gets knocked down to the top three and then nobody knows until the uh, day of. Well, so that then, makes sense then. Yeah. There's a reason so, why I didn't know. Exactly. You didn't have your speech prepared. You I didn't, didn't know. It was, it was completely caught off guard. I was like, all right, I guess we just won. It's cool. It's sitting right back there. That's awesome. Yeah. The pineapple. The That's pineapple. the first year they did the pineapple, too. It's a great, it's a great trophy. It's I'm, a really I'm, cool I'm, trophy. I'm not going to lie. It's a great trophy. I, I was in awe of it. I was so surprised. But this is actually one of the better trophies I've gotten. I've gotten so many different things in the past for like, whether it be like a cutting board or whether it be a pan, uh, a pan yeah. you know what I mean? Or, or a plate. Uh, <laughs> so but, generic. But, <laughs> so generic. Yeah, but you got the pineapple. Pineapple. The first one. That's great. So let's talk about what, where did you grow up? Where were you born? And, and give me a little bit of your, of your history. Uh, I mean, so I was, I was raised, it was raised in uh, San Bernardino, California. Okay. Uh, growing up, but I spent my time, my parents divorced at a young age. I think I was eight years old. But they stayed really good friends. Like, even better than I was with them. Like, they talked and still talk sometimes more than I talk to either, either one of them. Oh, that's funny. Uh, so it was really cool. So then my, my dad was in Chicago, so I, so I spent my time growing up because then I, until I eventually moved there. Okay. I eventually moved to Chicago permanently because uh, I just thought it was a much cooler city, and you, you just kind of want to get out of your surroundings and, yeah. know, and, and, and see new things. So, yeah. So I call both places home. Okay. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but I went to culinary school. I, I went to high school and uh, uh, grade school all in uh, California. All in California. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. then, wow, that's a... Uh, so what, at what age were you in Chicago? Uh, I mean, I was, I've been back and forth to Chicago my entire life. Your entire then, life? Yeah. Okay. And then I permanently moved there. I was, it was in 2006, seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 2005. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you have, so you, you have family just kind of all over the place. And yeah, my family's, we're, we're literally all over the place. Tell me a little bit about your family. I understand you have an uncle that was a culinary. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a great uncle uh, uh, back in C- uh, Virginia. Yeah, he's a, a CMC certified master chef. Uh, so i so kind of been around food my entire life. Yeah. You know, my, 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 from my aunts, to both my parents are good cooks. Okay. Uh, so it was always fun, you know, uh, uh, around the house, around, the, around you know, holiday seasons and, th- and get together and stuff like that because everyone was trying to outdo each other. On the, on, on, on the cooking front, I'm just a kid just trying to get in the pots. And such right. as my grandmother was always trying to get in the pots and stuff like that. You so. felt like you got the bug at an early age. Yeah, I got the bug. And then I started playing around and messing around it. As my mom calls it, I started burning a lot of things and making terrible food for a uh-huh. long time. But I was trying, though. You were trying. I yeah, was, get, I was the- getting in the game. I was getting in the game. <laughs> now, I have to imagine, as a, as a kid, you weren't necessarily sitting there imagining, oh, I'm going to be this you know, really awesome chef and have my own restaurant and do all that. Because I, I do believe you played football, correct? I did. 
and then yep. has so many things happen, you ended up getting injured? Or? Yeah, so many, yeah. Uh, long story short, ended up uh, getting an injury. It wasn't an injury that I couldn't recover from or anything yeah. like that, but it was at the, at the same time. I had my oldest son, so it was just like, as you know, as my mom, you know, uh, puts it, you know, what I mean, you know, stuff just got real. She actually didn't say that, but she says <laughs> uh, it just got real, and it just kind of all, kind of honestly, just the pieces just kind of fell. Yeah, and they they fell right in the place and were and, and worked. So that's never great. looked back. I mean, yeah, that's how it always works. One day I'll go back to coaching, but that's about it. What uh, what was the position that you played? I played inside linebacker transitioning to strong safety okay okay mm-hmm. i'd tell you the bears had some kick-ass linebackers back yeah, in the day back, back in the day the bears were known for defense <laughs> they, they weren't too shabby no so all right so now you're you're transitioning you're you're getting more into being a chef and and learning the ropes of the the restaurant industry per se and mm-hmm. cooking and all that so you went to court on blue yep correct and tell me that after getting out of there what was your experience as far as like getting a job and what was your first job and well, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, while early on, like right when we started culinary school, I actually uh, 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 was accepted. There was a quick, cook, uh, a quick uh, cooking competition in the class. Okay. Uh, um, and I won it, and I ended up getting to work with Michael Simarusti uh, for a, an event he was doing at, uh, at the Mocha Center in L.A. In LA. Uh, so I did that event with him, and I just kind of held my own with him and his, his sous chef, Human, and then he offered me a job. At, at, at water grill on the, I just, spot. I, on the spot at this fine dining restaurant in downtown LA in the heart of you know uh, uh, downtown LA so I worked the entire time I was in culinary school so I'd get up at you know uh, I'd get up at like 4 30 5 o'clock to, to drive an hour to go to culinary school go to culinary school from 6 to 1 30 sometimes 2 depending on what classes we had and then I would then I would hightail it to get to work to have to be at work by 2 30 3 o'clock oh my goodness and, and work, work until and I'd work till 1 o'clock in the morning oh my goodness yeah then drive home so, so you didn't hustle at all when you were younger. No, you're know, at right now. No, yeah, this was all handed to you. It was you, all handed right? to me. Natural, all, yeah. It was all handed to me. It was all <laughs> gift wraps. I woke up and it was all. They were like, "Here you go." Oh my goodness! And you worked at Nobu as well. Yep. And uh, how was, was that experience? Uh, Nobu working at Nobu was great. I was a sous chef at Nobu. Uh, I, I learned a lot there. I learned a lot quickly because like, I've always been the guy who 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 who. If you tell me to, if I have to be at work at one, I'll be there at ten. Yeah. Because I get up in the morning. I you know I have coffee. I'm the guy who who likes to do that stuff. Then I just go to work. So my very first day there, I showed up at like 10 o'clock, it was like 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. It was only the, uh, the sushi chefs there. They were cleaning rice. They were getting sharp and nice, getting set up. They were like, who are you? They were like, they had no clue. You know? yeah. They were like, who are you? And I explained who I was. And they were like, all right, well, we don't know what to do with the hot kitchen, but you can kind of help us out a little bit. You, you know what I mean? So I did that. And I kind of just, uh, uh, formed this bond with them, whether it be sharpening knives, you know, uh, 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 making tempura batter and butchering fish and all this kind of stuff and they saw that I had a yeah. lot of passion for it and uh, it just kind of helped me there you, you know and it, it took me all kinds of places you know so you, literally as you're going to school you're working in these restaurants and you're just you're learning on the spot just any and everything yeah. that you oh, can yeah, yeah. Uh, I often you know there's a story about from Bradley Ogden uh, when I was working at Bradley Ogden where the chef de cuisine came up and we were changing the menu we, we have we had an annual break there we came back from uh, from the break he hands me he hands me a menu here's the menu we need, we need, we need we're going to be open tomorrow at three <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> and it was like all of us he, he just had his menu and we had to do it you know because at that level you're just like you're, you're supposed you to know do, how to do these things and, yeah uh, and you get it done oh my goodness yeah. when um when you were going to, working at your first couple of restaurants had you had started a family yet or did you have a yeah family? so i had my, i had my uh, uh oldest son uh justin who's in college now uh, yeah. so we, we we had him so you know it's one of it's one of those things like now kind of changes changed the way who i am now yeah with noah you know, uh, now I want to be home, and I, I, I you know, because I, I didn't spend a lot of time with him growing up, because I, when he was growing up, because I was in kitchens. Yeah. And this, I can't even begin to tell you. My, <laughs> my parents hated what I did. Really? They hated it. They, they didn't. They didn't really fully understand it. They didn't understand why I was gone so long, and why I couldn't be at birthdays, and why I had to miss this funeral, right? Why I didn't go to this, or why I didn't do that, or you, you, you know what I mean? But then, I'll never forget the day I had my dad come to one of the uh, restaurants, and he was like. I had him eat mushrooms and beets, things he hates. Yeah. And uh, he was floored. He was like, <laughs> I get it now. I understand it now. He thought, because he thought it was just a hobby. He thought it was right. just something I was doing because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I can understand that. That so. was like me going in the music business or like, you know, mm-hmm. what kind of career is this? You know, but you just knew what you loved and what you had a passion for. Yeah, and you followed through exactly. with it. Exactly. And it was, the it was, funny part about it, it wasn't, it was something that just kind of came to me. Yeah. It, it's never, it's never been work. 
It, right. It's, yeah, it's never you, been work. You've been retired since you started. Exactly. Yeah. It's never been. It's never been work, and it's and it's fun. I tell everybody the moment it becomes work is the moment I'll just retire and be done yeah. with cooking and move on to the other thing I want to do in my For life. For sure. So. And then and so you have two kids. Yeah. Okay. And two obviously, boys. and and then you live with your wife. Mm -hmm. And then how how many dogs? Uh, we have one dog. We have one dog that my mom is visiting now. So my mom, my mom has her dog with her. But we have one dog, Jameson. Okay. Very he cool. is a uh, uh, he is a pit bull lab mix, ah. and he is a uh, he's a ham. You I know, bet. I mean, he likes to try and get up in your lap and be in your lap, but he doesn't understand. He weighs fifty pounds. <laughs> they never do. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, let's let's get you into Arizona now. Yeah. Um, so you came here. What year did you come to Arizona? I came to Arizona in two thousand and eight. Okay, so you've been here. Well, yeah, eleven. Yeah, I've been eleven years. Eleven years now. Yeah. Is that crazy to you? It has, because I didn't think I was going to be here that long, because when I, when I moved here, I moved here in June, and um, by August, I had to take it back to Chicago. I was over it. Yeah. The heat. I was like, what is this? You're like, this is way too hot. You know, I get off that plane, and I was just like, I got to the airport. <laughs> I was like, what? why is it so hot in here? <laughs> why am I doing this? Yeah, and then, uh, and then you know, after, after some time, I was fortunate enough to be able to to be able to either, to work with and be surrounded by some really 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 like lifelong friends and I, you know yeah. really good people you know so I know you worked with Tarbell is that uh, yeah I, when I when I first came to town I actually when I first came to town I actually was looking for a gig but I couldn't find one uh, but then I ended up taking on a consulting job uh, um, uh, for coming back in, I helped, okay. I helped open up uh, BLT Steak there. Yeah. And, and at the time, they were going through a uh, uh, retransition of the property. So now, what is now Rita's Kitchen, I helped open up that mm -hmm. as well. So I did a bunch of things in that property with myself and some other uh, and some other chefs from other parts of the world. Actually, they had people in from Sweden That's helping amazing. out. It was uh, it was a crazy kind of time to be there. And then uh, I got the uh, I got the call from uh, from Jimmy Gallon, uh, uh, and had to go and do an Iron Chef. Ah. Uh, uh, tasting at Tarbell's on a Friday night in the middle of service. Oh, um, wow. I never forget that. Me and Jim talk about it all the time because I was so pissed off. <laughs> oh, my God. I was so upset. <laughs> I was so mad. Oh, I can't even imagine. Busy Friday night at Tarbell's. And he's like, so it was an Iron Chef style because Mark had just come off, you know, yeah. being and winning on Iron Chef. And he's like, this is what it is. Here you go. Boom. Let us know when you're ready. But then throughout the course of the night, people were, there was one oven in the back. People were turning the oven up. So my salmon got burned. Yeah. And I, I had these two cassette decks to work on and people around you. And, like, things were missing from the – it was a nightmare. It's like a war. Yeah, Jim remembers standing there. And I remember when he was standing there. It was when my salmon got burned. He's like, I was standing there watching you, waiting for you just to walk out. Yeah. He was waiting for me to walk out because he could see how upset and how frustrated I was. Like, right. What is going on? Like, this is crazy. You're like, I didn't burn the salmon. The salmon was burnt because yeah. of what's going on in here. Yeah, what's yeah. going on? This madness is happening around me. Like, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, it's, it's, so it's a fun story. And I literally left there frustrated. Yeah. Upset, pissed. Well, and then I get, I, I didn't even get a mile away before Jim called me back. And I was like, hey, man, I want to tell you you did a great job. We want to offer you the job and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I took the position at Tarbell's. It's like, as the uh, executive chef at Tarbell's and oh, that's working a great with story. Mark and Jim for a while. So it was, uh, it was, it was fun. I love it. I love yeah. it. Re kind of going back a little bit, what, what really brought you to Phoenix? What was the... So what brought me was my ex fiance. She, so we met, we met in Chicago and she, she had been working with the military. Yeah. She went to ASU. She was born and raised there. She okay. went to ASU and then uh, uh, she did some work with the military in Korea for a while, helped setting up their um, front of uh, 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 intramural sports and stuff like that for the, okay. for, for, the, for the guys on the base. And so she hadn't been back in a while. And I had come with her to visit a couple of times and she would take me to Bianco. She would take me to Nobu when, it, when Nobu had Seesaw and stuff like that. All uh -huh. these great places. And I was like, oh, Phoenix has got a little, little bit of a scene. I can't have her anything. That was like 11 years ago. I know, right? So uh, I... Um, so I was like, cool, I'll go. Came out here, you know, I met Peyton. Uh, that's when I met, I met Peyton Curry for the first time way back then. And he, he and Keenan and all those cats and met the struggle of friendship with those guys. And we're still friends to this day and kind of cool. just, you know, worked my way through. And you look up and you look up 11 years later, like, wow. You Arizona know I mean? does that to people. It just sucks you know? them in. And, and I just had some, again, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to meet some great people and I had some really, really got opportunities to do some really cool things. Yeah, you have, you know, speaking to that, you, you all has, as chefs have a very, I mean, I look at the picture on your wall over there. You have a very tight knit community of people that really sincerely love each other and are mm -hmm. looking out for each other. Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh, I served more food than you last weekend or, oh, I'm going to take your dinner. No, you guys all help each other. And we I all, love that. We all help each other. And that's what one of the things when, 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 when Bernie and I first started doing the seven chefs and we were creating this thing and, uh, 
it was mainly about just us wanting to hang out. Yeah. And being able to spend some time with each other and just kind of chill and hang out and laugh and poke fun at each other. We didn't really take what we were doing. We, it wasn't, it's never been a competition. Right. You know, you, you know what I mean? So it's always been about fun, about fun and, 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 and exciting and who can do what and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we, again, that, that avenue was taking us, you know, even though it's the seven chefs, we really go about 10, 12 people deep because we have, you know, Doug is, you know, uh, Doug Ropes, and he, uh, he's definitely a huge part of what we do. Yeah. Justin Beckett's a huge part of what we do. You know, Gregory Wiener was involved for a while too. Gregory Casali, you know, yeah. you know, it took, it took us all the way to the Beard House, that photo right there on the wall that, that's at the Beard House, you know. Right. And, uh, Right. Another fun opportunity that, at the time, the Beard House hadn't even done. They had never had seven chefs in that kitchen at the same time. They Dude. were because at the staff, the staff was telling us, we, "We don't know how this is going to go." So yeah, we've never had this many people in here before. So it's it's the first time for everybody. Go for it. Yeah, just you know <laughs> what I mean. And uh, and it, it worked out, and we had a great time, and uh, no one was bumping into each other and that kind of stuff. And that's crazy. Jeremiah Tower was there. It was yeah. great. Well, and, and, and things just get better and better, you know, as, as they go on. Yeah. Which is, which is really cool about Seven We Chefs. often, you know, a lot of things that we do, you know, again, with, the, with that group, tight group of people, is just try, we try to support each other. Yeah. And when you see, you see people, like, doing things and you, you realize, okay, that happened because you helped us out or they helped me out or I got help right. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what it should be about. It should be a community of chefs, you know, having a good time. It should never be about competition or sales or you took this or you took that. It's, like, not even about that. It's, it's a great attitude to have in, in, in any industry, whatever it is. You know, I, I try to live that same format with within what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody competes with with you. You compete with yourself. Exactly. And and really, it's just about being a good person at the end of the day. Because when we're all dust, who gives a shit? Who gives, yeah, who gives right? A shit. None of it matters. Yeah, none of it matters. None of it matters. Um, let's let's talk to Soto days because yeah. I know those were big days for you, and and you did everything there um yeah. you know tell me a little bit about your experience there before yeah the soda was it came off of a uh, blue hound and then leaving blue hound which blue hound was like my baby yeah at the time because you know i was i was heavily involved with that and heavily involved with kempton uh, um so great relationships with kempton but like coming going into the soda the soda was like the first of its kind it was like the first phoenix had seen anything like that so we were we were very very early in what we were doing i'll tell you the funniest part about the soda I opened the soto, had a son the same week. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was literally going back from the soto to Banner to the hospital, uh, <laughs> yeah, get, getting in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's how stressful the soto was for me in the, in the beginning. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we got the soto up, up, up and running again. People didn't know what it was. Like well, with the soto, it was this great great concept that, that, that Sean Conley had and that it, we got together we had this great vision for it and in the beginning you know we had this great vision for certain things and like with all things certain things kind of fizzle out yeah and what that happened was is that it left the public just want, wanting wait this thing is this concept finished what are we doing here right and honestly where do we go yeah. Once we got in there. So we were able to do some really good things with the Oyster Bar with Wallace and the Pearl. Yeah. We had DC and Burger Bar in there. That was yeah. great. We had T Spressa. That's Allison doing her thing. Hey. Uh, and then we, then we, then we had uh, uh, the Larder and the Delta, which when we first opened, it was called Yardbird. That's it wasn't, right. it wasn't called Larder and Delta. Okay. Yeah. We got a cease and desist. And then um, from a company out of uh, Miami, the funny part about it, we were going back and forth with lawyers and stuff like that. And my lawyer was like, you really want to fight this? Like, we can fight it. We, we you know, we have a semi-strong case. It would just come up down to what the judge thought was, you know, who had first rights first. And I was like, I, I really, honestly, I really don't. I just, I'm too busy for this right now. Yeah. So when, when we decided to change the name, we sent the paperwork in. Two weeks later, that company filed for bankruptcy. Went out of business. Went out of business. Isn't that always the case? I was like, you kidding me right now? Oh, uh, so that that's really the the birth of the larder. <laughs> that's that's the birth. Yeah, yeah that, that's the birth of the uh, of the larder. And uh, just uh, you know, staying up night trying to figure it out. And uh, and we won some, we won some awards, did some fun some fun stuff. And yeah. it was like, uh, uh, I created a dish that built this place, the cauliflower dish. Yeah. And um, and you know, just listening to people and everyone everyone's you know uh, 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 thoughts and well wishes and you know, like. You know, everyone was like, dude, you're, what are you doing? This is too small for what you guys should, should be doing. You need, you need a spot of, of its own. You need a spot of yeah. its own. And so it, it kind of all just happened the way it, mm -hmm. it was really supposed to. I mean, I mean, it was weird because, like, we, we closed on July 17th. July 17th, either 16th or 17th. Yeah. And exactly a year later, uh, uh, we opened here on August 3rd. 
And then within that same year, DeSoto closed. So tell me about the story of finding this place. We were talking a little bit yeah, before so this. Yeah, so it's funny. I, I had been just looking for looking for spots. Looking for, I, I mean, I literally looked every single spot. Downtown, yeah. Just walking the streets. And uh, me and a commercial broker, just, you know, multiple people just looking at spaces, peeking in spaces, looking at things. And you were focused on yeah, downtown. Yeah, I wanted to be downtown. Yeah. I live downtown. I, I have great support downtown. I, I believe in what, what downtown is yeah. trying to do. So I wanted to be down. And I'm a city guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so... I was kind of got my wits in and we were starting to branch out. We were starting to expand our, 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 our area code and what we wanted to, our, our zip code, I'm sorry. And I get a phone call and I get a phone call with Tim Sprague, who's the developer of the hotel yeah. and Portland on the park. And he was like, hey, you got a minute. I go, I want to show, show you something. I'm like, sure, okay, whatever. And so I, I had met him for coffee, we met for coffee, then we walked over here and I was like, wait a second. What in the world? This is like perfect. This is on the outside. I'm like, this is actually perfect. There's life going. People are walking their dogs. There's, you know, yeah. I can look at the wind. All, all these things. Like, when, when is this? He's like, we just finished. We just finished. And so we just got, got, got to talking. And uh, we, we, we were able to come together with a, with a, with a good deal. And uh, we forced a restaurant in this space. And uh, it worked out. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> we literally, like, the, 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 the square peg round hole, this is what, exactly what this was. We literally forced a restaurant in here. How many stories does this go up? Uh, so this, this goes up six. And, and you had to get the hood all the way through? We had to vent the hood all the way oh. to the top. Yeah, that was not fun dropping that down in there. And, and not even tell me about the, the cost of it. But correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, you obviously had a guy that was interested in you. He believed in you yeah. and mm -hmm. obviously worked with you to mm -hmm. make all that happen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Portland, uh, 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 Portland, Portland Place Partners and, 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 and Tim Sprague and John Hill, yeah. great partners. They, you know, I mean, they did. They, they don't, they've been over backwards for us to help us out, you know, when, when we ran into all the issues we ran into, whether we're dealing with the city, whether we're dealing with APS, Southwest Gas, yeah. whatever it was. Like, it was, it was a long time to get this place open. We, we, we were, I, was, I sat here for six weeks with a completed restaurant with no oh, gas. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that scene way yeah. too many times, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about, and tell the people listening or, or watching, tell a little bit about um, your food. Um, what, t tell me, what is the essence of Southern cooking? What, what does that mean to you? So it's funny, like the, the, the essence of Southern cooking, I believe, and, and it's whole is based around vegetables. When you, when, you, when, you, when you really, really think about Southern cooking and it's the roots of Southern cooking, you have to go back to, you have to go back to the slave trade. You have, to go, you have to go back to the plantation life and yeah. stuff like that because that's who was doing the cooking. If you looked in the, in the kitchen, it wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't the wife of the house, the head of the household. It no. was no. It was the mammy in the kitchen doing, doing all the cooking and stuff like that. And that's what she was cooking. And when you, when you talk about Southern food, you know, proteins weren't readily available. Definitely not to slaves. What, right. what, 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 what slaves got was just scraps and thrown out. But you, what you did have, you did have grains there. You did have crops and you did have yeah. uh, produce. So that's what I kind of center, center, center around what we do. Although we do, you know, meat and fish dishes and stuff like that. Right. But we center our thought process on around vegetables and vegetable cookery. The basis for everything that we do here is vegetable stock. Yeah. We don't use meat stocks here. We don't use anything like it. that. We, we start, we, we, we take vegetables and, uh, you know, our scraps, we grind them down. We use them for fillings and stuff. We burn them, turn them into ash. We use it in a doze wow. and stuff like that. We use, we use them in all kinds of different, different elements. It's the, that's the essence of this restaurant is, is, is vegetables. And, you know, we won, you know, Phoenix Magazine, best, best vegetables yeah. and all that kind of stuff for, uh, uh, for that. And that's the essence of what we do. And we do, we, 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 we vocalize that, we express that by just telling the story through Arizona produce. Well, ha ha who doesn't love vegetables that, you know, aren't cooked like amazing? Right. You know, and your cauliflower dish, like mm -hmm. you said, is, is renowned. And, and you look at, I mean, you look at the beans and rice that you do. Yeah. Holy cow. It just makes me salivate thinking of the, what Apple I saw on YouTube the mm -hmm. other day. Um, but the thing is, is you can make your food as dirty as you want and you can make it as clean as you want. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and I think that's great that's because fun. you're using natural ingredients. Yeah. You're using local ingredients. And let's, let's get into that because you were at... So I sponsored the, the Good Food Forum, and you were um, gracious enough to be a, a guest speaker there for, for Kimber and, and Local First and all that. And fortunately, unfortunately, uh, really, um, it was cool that we had all of you there, Tamara and a couple mm -hmm. of the farmers. Yeah, I, I don't it's great. recall their names, but it was awesome what you guys did. But nobody really got to hear you because yeah. it was so damn so, loud in so there. So damn loud there. Um, so l l maybe just some of the bullet points of what you had gotten out of the conversation with them and, and what you would like to kind of just portray to other people listening about mm. how important it is to not only important, but how possible it is for a restaurateur to be able to shop local and to make it work within your menu and how much it means to 
really even people's intestines at the end of the yeah. day. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, definitely at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's just better for you. Yeah. You, you, you just take less traveled miles. You know what I mean? Less hands touching it. Yeah. Less transactions going Love on. Love it. So that's the easiest way to look at it from yeah. that from that from that point of view. But you know, and, and, and a much more deeper context is just like it's it's just it just makes sense. Like, right? Why would you not want to buy from someone who is out there raising or growing or whatever you know whatever they're doing yeah. farming a, a, a produce that's. 50 miles from you, 60 miles from you. Why not? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the whole point of what we're doing is trying to get the freshest uh, possible product that we, that we can get. Again, less miles. You, you know what I mean? So that's one of, the, one of the main reasons why you do it. And not to mention, you're supporting other local business. Yeah. Other small business. You're not supporting a big conglomerate farm that has hundreds of thousands of acres. You know what I mean? You're supporting, you know what I mean, a small farmer who is doing this. For yeah. small margins, also. No. You, you know what I mean? And keeping that money, those, those dollars spent local. You know what I mean? And you get to transact with the owners of these farms and, and the cool people that. that yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You get to have an actual dialogue or conversation with the person totally. who, grew, who grew it. You know what I mean? Who can tell you when it's at its peak or who can tell you what other things he or she might have on the farm that you may yeah. not know or stuff like that. So it's fun. And they get to geek out and see what you do with it, you know, with, with, with their product. You know what I mean? And it, it's also it's a thank you. Right. They see, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a thank you. They t- they spent their time and effort to grow this carrot in right. a certain way for you, and then you take the effort to cook it in a in a, in a, in a, in a sustainable and a beautiful way. It's a, it's, a, it's just a thank you. you Wouldn't know? you it's, say it's there's a, a huge misconception about Arizona and what it can actually grow? So I'm and and I'll, to relate to that, I'm a gardener myself. Mm-hmm. Now I'm I'm okay. Um, I have a lady that comes over and helps me. Ashley, the gardener, she's fucking amazing by the way that's a plug for her plug so um but i just i literally pulled out sweet potatoes the size of you know basically the size of like small melons out of my you know horse trough garden i mean and i grew those i'm so proud of myself Mm -hmm. but like tomatoes and cucumbers and carrots and all sorts of stuff and i think a lot of people just kind of assume oh it's a desert you can't grow anything out here you can't get i mean that myth is gone yeah I think, that, I think that myth, like, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty when I, when I wasn't, when I didn't live here, I thought the same thing. Like, what grows in the desert? You know what I mean? What, what can you grow in the <laughs> totally. desert? You know, but it, that's, that's also one of, like, the really, really, really cool things about Arizona that I don't think people fully understand. If you were to go 100 miles in any different direction, you're in a whole different topography. 100%. Whole different, it'll yep. blow your mind. Yeah. It blew my mind when I first experienced it. I was like, holy hell. Right. Damn. So, that being said, Ken, it's a desert. So the weather patterns are going to change. The weather is going to change. You, you, and you can grow things here. Things grow great here. Lettuces yep. grow great here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tomatoes grow great here. These things grow great here. Yeah. And, and as you begin to educate yourself and learn about it, you then figure it out. Yeah. You, you know, it just takes a little, again, it just takes a little bit of education on yourself. Like, and, just, and just giving a fuck. For sure. For sure. What, what are some of the local companies? I know you, you and Jacob have a really close relationship, yeah. so uh, Katino's yeah, Hot Katino's Sauce. Yeah, Katino's Hot Sauce is uh, uh, one of them. We use his hot sauces in multiple different, different forms. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm usually the, uh, uh, the R&D component to that. I mean, he has a lot of R&D himself, but I'm the one who, who, who will put it out and serve it to the public. Yeah. Uh, I'll be the guinea pig for a lot of that he stuff. He got a Foodist Award last year. Yeah, he did get a Foodist Award. Yes, he yeah. did. Uh, so we, we definitely use him from the Crow's Dairies of the world. You know, Wendell, cool. who doesn't love Wendell? Uh, uh, he may be the funniest farmer I think I've ever met. That's like, awesome. If you yeah. Follow him on Insta. And it's hilarious. Uh, 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 Dave from Two Wash Ranch. We, yep. we use his birds, his, his ducks, yep. his produce, his eggs. You know, who, how you not love that guy? Uh, 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 RJ from, uh, from Crooked Sky and all the stuff that he's doing yeah. out there. Uh, with Blue Sky Organics. Obviously, McClendon. Right. Uh, uh, Bob and Sean are, are great friends. I've known Bob and Sean for so long. Sounds like there's enough produce and other things for you to get, put a menu together, right? Yeah, there's, 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 yeah. there's, a, there's a couple, two, three. Yeah, it's so cool that you brought a, a Southern hospitality and a flair. I grew up in Atlanta. Um, I was born here, actually, but grew up okay. in Atlanta. So I grew up with a lot of, you know, the fried chicken mm-hmm. and the collard greens and, and all that sort of stuff. It was just ingrained in that area of where we were, mm-hmm. and I loved it. But you don't see a lot of it in Arizona. No, you don't see a lot of it in Arizona. But what you do see here is you do see the soul food. Yeah. And I'm not what we do, that's what I tell people all the time, like, what we do here is not soul food. Uh, uh, from time to time, we can do it and we will do it, but we, we do something that's a little bit different. There are a couple of soul food spots out here, like Mrs. White's is great. It's, it's great, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, but we do, what we do is a little bit different than that. Yeah, um, but again, it's all it's all good. You don't. There's there's only one of us. Here. There's no one doing what 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 we do. No. Uh, we're, we're we're the only ones doing it and having 
like such a good damn time. Like we're having fun. You, you know what I mean? And we, the funniest part about it is we haven't really like touched the surface and, and on right. what we really want to do because we're still trying to figure out our client base and what they you're, want. You're only a year into it. That's I know. what's, you know, that's what's and so I, awesome. And I, and I get so, I keep forgetting that. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I really, really do. I have to tell myself sometimes like when I get so, when I get frustrated and there's like, and I'm pissed at X, Y, and Z or pissed I'm like, you're still only like, you know, 15 months into this thing. Yeah, like, you're a puppy. Yeah, pump your brakes, pump your brakes a little bit. There's all kind of learning curves. There's things you're not going to know. And That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Tell me, tell me a little bit about um, just you being, and, and, and this is a respectful thing, being older in the mm -hmm. hospitality industry oh, yeah. and, and learning some of the things both physically and mentally that you've been able to kind of um, change in your lifestyle as far as being a chef and, you know, working your ass off and yeah. eating certain things that you did. Like, <laughs> what, what are some hints or tips of the trade you can give to just common people out there? Rule one, rule one that you learn quickly and, you, and you're forced this. This, this is going to happen. This is a young man's game. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna experience that really really quickly in the terms of just like you know the days of like the 20 hour days, 18 hour days, and then going out all night hanging out or whatever. Yeah. You just can't do that anymore. It's just not sustainable. You you learn that as you uh, as you grow, uh, um, in, in the business. And it's kind of like when you play in sports, and if you hear all the greats, all, all uh, great athletes, they all talk about it when the game slows down. Right. Right. So that's what happens when you when you when you when you're in this for for for. for for from from the five to the ten year mark is a big big time I think yeah uh, it's because it's all about exploration and you're just coming into learning management uh, um, it's when you learn all that and it starts to slow down for you yeah meaning that like you're not trying to do 15 touches on one plate right you, now you're going to build go back to like putting together a dish that has five touches or four touches or three touches it's and, a great and analogy being, and being done with it yeah you know what i mean so i think that's that's one of the biggest things when the game just starts to slow down for me and you transition you know you, you focus into you know from the moment you become an executive chef you know you now know one thing you're never going to be a sous chef again right because for a lot of reasons whether it, it be by by choice or by happenstance but no one's going to hire you as a, as a sous chef because you've been an executive chef before an owner. So they're like, why would I ever do that to myself? Yeah. Um, so since, so knowing that you have to switch your mentality and becoming understanding how to run a business, right? How, how the business operates. Yeah. Cause at, at that level too, at executive chef level, no one is really paying you to be creative. They already know you can cook. Yep. They're paying you to run a business. Yeah. And you need to understand that it's a business. You know, first. At the like, end of the day, it's a business. At the end of the day, yeah. it's a business. You can do whatever the hell you want to. Yeah, it's kind of like that rock star that pissed all their money away in royalties or exactly. whatever and has nothing left. Or the athlete. Or the athlete. Or, yeah, yeah, I mean, you are the business. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. I mean, for me, you know, like now, I, I say this now to people, my, my staff, my sous chef and stuff like that. It's just like, my job isn't to cook every single night. Yeah. People already know that I can do that. I've proved that part of my my, my, my life. My life is to, my, what I, my job is now is to put, butts in the seat yeah create an experience building, create an experience keep the keep 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 the people happy keep the building open pay the bills all the things and, and i think you would agree to take care of yourself so you can take it, care of that's others. the other part exactly yeah. it's, it's it's to be here you know for me now like i have a young son now he's four and a half will be five yeah i'm a, a we're, 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 we're 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 a big part of each other's life like that is my mini me it's, it's huge the little dude is here cooking with me all the time he talks about food all he wants to do is be around food yeah he goes with me everywhere loves his dad uh, yeah so uh, and i want to be there i want to be around for him and i promise and i promise my, my wife that i'd be around more yeah so and that's why when i talk talk to people now about about the restaurant business now it's very very important to me it's who i am it's in me yeah but now where i am mentally it's not the same as it was when you know what i mean so, so you're getting you're getting your little bit of exercise in mm -hmm. you're watching what you eat a little Watch bit what you get a little, yeah. little bit more of the exercise and stretching in. Stop going to trampoline parks and damaging my knee. Like, <laughs> like I wane fast and I can barely walk. Like, uh, I'm getting, that's getting better. But, you know, the, the, uh, those things, you know what I mean? But, like, it's funny. I damaged my knee, but I was actually, I was actually having fun playing with my son. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, whatever. I know. It's, yeah. it's kind of a win-win, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, you learn. Yeah. So you, uh, you do, you've done Devour how many years? Oh, wow. All of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a good one for you, isn't it? Yeah, Devour's a good one for me. Yeah. Me and me, me, me Kimber and the Devour, Devour team have been tight for a long Kim, time. Yeah, Kimber's the best. And, and I, I know, well, we were talking before this. I saw you at Wayne's Fest. Yeah. You didn't see me because your head was down in chicken and <laughs> chicken and buns the whole time. Yeah. You know, serving 72 deep, which was great. Wayne's Fest is a little uh, festival out here in the Coronado District out in Arizona. And uh, 
And Chef was just here cranking away. I, I, I'd never seen anything like Weeds. it. Weeds. <laughs> it, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, you you like doing those events? You like being? I do. I I, I always love being there. I mean, I would be part of the community and, and do things that are like that, that have a direct effect effect on what we do. You yeah. Know, you, know, you know what I mean? And Devoured is one of them. Wayne's Fest is, is another one. I like to be around that and, 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 and the environment. Sometimes, like nowadays, as I'm as I'm as I'm the old chef now, the bigger events now are like right. less attracting to me. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's well. There's that, but it's also like it doesn't feel, you know what I mean, a part of anything. Yeah, you know I, I see mean? what you're saying. Kind of yeah, like Scottsdale Culinary or <laughs> just boom. That's the reason why I've only done it one time. Yeah, yeah. And you, you just you get lost and it becomes it becomes something else. It becomes about transaction. Yeah. And maybe not the quite the intimate experience exactly. like what you're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. why I like what they've done with the Devour and kept it very yes. much the same and not I mean, blowing it. Also, you know, when someone pukes on your table at, at, at Costa Colony Fast and you realize, okay, I'm Yeah, done coming with from this. the vodka tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go from the yeah. vodka tent to come to straight over and you just boot all of my table. And that's totally. Great. Thank you, young lady. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, um, what. What's next for you? I mean, obviously, you're running this place, creating the experience, doing some stuff. Do you, do you have any inklings of another location? Or? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? We, we, we were fortunate enough to be able to get together, get a really good deal here with the space, and we have a great relationship with everyone over here. I do want to do something. I do want to do something. But look, but if I do, it'll be something more on the fast, casual side. Cool. And, you know, it could, it could be hot chicken related. It could, it may not be. Who knows? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Uh, but I don't know. But uh, definitely something that I'm, that I'm strongly thinking about. Yeah. No. That's and awesome. people are starting to reach out to me to do so. That's that's really cool. Well, we're um, I, I have a few um, just uh, rapid fire questions for you, but f- right. before we get into that, where let everybody know like where they can find you social media wise. Yeah, Devin, you can find us at, uh, on Instagram, uh, the Larder PHX. You can definitely find us there. We're active on there. We're uh, on Twitter as well at the Larder at the Larder six uh, no Larder four eight zero. I just changed it. Larder four eight zero. We were at six zero two. Cool. Uh, uh, Facebook as well, the, the Larder in the Delta, and uh, yeah. That's, okay. where, that's where we're located. You can find us. Yeah, and he's he's here down on Portland Street, which is uh, yeah, two hundred West Portland. Yeah, and it's it is a really really cool location. I love it. How you just can look out the windows and see the traffic going by. Right, that's like the best thing ever. Yeah, you look up and like you're, you're working, you're cooking, you're doing whatever. When you look, I mean, again, life's out there. It's Portland in the park. You you see people jogging, working out, yeah, or stretching or sitting in the park, reading or doing doing whatever. It's life happening. You're not just looking at four walls. Right, you're feeding life while life is going on. Look at you, so deep. So Boom. Deep. So yeah. deep. So I, deep. I I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, here here's some here's some fun questions for you. So. If you had a chance to hang out with dinosaurs or aliens, which ones would it be? Wow, dinosaurs <laughs> or aliens? Uh, wow, that's a, that's a that's a cool question. <laughs> I think I'd have to probably say dinosaurs. I think aliens would be too too technological. This shit's deep, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's way it. deep. <laughs> Whereas a dinosaur, I can hang out with a dinosaur, yeah. and I like live fire cooking, so we can hang out. There you go. Okay, <laughs> very cool. Uh, if you had to go to one concert, would it be Van Halen or ACDC? ACDC. Okay, very cool. And which singer? The original or Bon Scott, or would it be Brian? Or? No, I have to go original. Okay. I, I have to go original. Gotcha. Um, I, I have to assume but I'm not going to. So tell me your sport of choice, baseball or football? I love them both, but football is my absolute passion. Football okay. is everything to me. And you still watch it? I still watch it. I still, yeah. I still watch it. I still play fantasy football. I'm probably, when I'm done with us cooking, I'm more likely going to go back into coaching because I, cool. I coached before. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's another passion. Um, if you go on vacation and you have two choices and the choices are Paris or Hawaii, which one? Hawaii. Okay. And... If you're going to have two choices to either bike 100 miles or run a marathon. How about neither? <laughs> How about find, the, find the, the nearest club and just have a beer and just watch football? Because right. both of those are I, – I, running is my thing. Here's my thing is running. It gets boring. It's so boring. I've tried it, and I'm like, I'm just bored. Have you tried trail running? No, I've not tried. Okay, I'm gonna maybe that's something. I'm gonna take you on a trail run. Uh, that could be different. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. There's no wrong answers in these, by the way. Um, Star Wars or Star Trek? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. I gotta say Trekkie because my I, I, my mom was a huge Star Trek fan when I was growing up. So yeah. then I followed her in suit too. Okay. So I love Star. I love Star Trek. Don't get me wrong. Star Wars, Star Wars is cool too. New movie coming out next New, week. Yeah. Baby I'm, Yoda. Uh, Everybody's on this Baby Yoda kick. Right. Everyone's everyone's <laughs> on it. All the memes and everything about it. Yeah. I'm I'm on it. Uh, camping or a five star resort? Camping. Okay. 
I went camping with Aaron Chamberlain. That was probably one of the funnest. I think I saw the. I think I yeah. was Doug with you guys too. No, was, was Doug, Doug. I think Doug got a little jealous, but oh. uh, we took Nick from Clever Coy with us. That's what it was. Yeah, Nick. It was Nick. yeah. And, and Aaron was just like, "I'll cook for everybody." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then I took everybody on a trail run the next day. Um, <laughs> beer or wine? Wine. Okay. And then coffee or ice cream? Coffee. Yeah, I figured. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. that was great. I thanks so much for you know being a part of the podcast and taking your time out today and letting us be in your home. Definitely. Thank it's you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, for everybody listening, please give me a five star. Don't be lazy. Just give it to me. And uh, I uh, <laughs> just give the damn five. <laughs> just star. give the damn five star. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, uh, this is Bar Restaurant Podcast. You can find us on Instagram. Uh, please follow Local Four Eight Zero on Instagram as well. And uh, until next time, peace out.